emotional intelligence has four critical clusters self awareness self management we have uh, social awareness and relationship management all these are very important in business business development and also self development we are looking at business leadership from the same definition as know your business do you know your business then second control thyself do you control your business in all aspects from customer financial processes and people using the balance scorecard model four things do you know the business in matters of customer how do you know it matters of customer how do you know it in matters uh financials how do you know it in matters processes and how do you know it in matters people so what is this leadership and the third aspect of give thyself when it is to you as a person for business you must be able to sacrifice for your business and the business must be able to sacrifice particularly during these hard times for you to be able to achieve what you set to achieve even if you're gonna have many challenges at crisis like we have the covid-19 reality then we can be able to see for the best to do why is it in, uh, why is leadership important and why do we need leaders why do we need leaders we cannot do without somebody sacrificing what does it mean to be a leader and who is a leader we will continue in this definition leadership is the capacity uh to influence others remember first of all you must have sacrificed yourself is the capacity to influence others through inspiration there must you must have been inspired you must have passion motivated by a vision the first question asked this morning if you feel like stopping ask yourself why did you start there must have been a vision for you to start doing a business what was that vision was it selfish or was it transformational it must be birthed from a conviction you must be convinced that really these things that i'm going to do i will want to leave a legacy completing life purpose journey and it must be produced by purpose that was from the late dr mars mondro definition now in an it's an influence relationship among leaders and followers who intend real changes and outcomes that reflect their shared purpose there must be shared purpose a leader must sacrifice even to share the purpose leadership is a function of knowing yourself again by professor warren barnes by from dr stanley karanja i summarize it into three again know thyself control thyself give thyself what is called sacrifice so have the vision write it down place it somewhere strategically in your business let us look at it sometimes you as a business person you may be writing it but it is difficult to bring it about and that's why we have like stan consulting group dr stan kran and other associate consultants will help you get your dream into the paper then communicate it to your colleagues so that it builds trust and taking effective action to realize your own leadership potential it is not just enough you must take effective action you must get to your vision analyze the situation analysis by doing the sort analysis saying what are your weaknesses what are your what are the opportunities out there why you are starting business to solve a problem there are four critical uh, intelligences for you as a human being first there is physical intelligence these are the matters to do with your body what you eat how you relax how uh, how you engage your body your nutrition that's about physical intelligence the building of the body body becomes the organ of the physical intelligence then number 2 we have what is called mental intelligence that is the second intelligence for you as a human being you as a human being you have the mind the mind is the home of mental intelligence so uh this is about the learning like what we are doing today we are enhancing we are nourishing our minds we are learning together now after emotional intelligence remember we said there's leadership we must be building consistently uh, our journey towards greatness and now on emotional intelligence 
The next is spiritual intelligence. What does spiritual intelligence talk about? Or does, what does it lead us? Spiritual intelligence are matters to do with legacy. In your spirit, everything that you are doing on a day to day, what value system do you have? What legacies shall you leave? When you are operating a business, did you operate the business just for the sake of money? Or you had a legacy to leave when you exit even that business or you exit from the planet Earth? So, okay, how do you make competitors somewhat irrelevant, especially in a world that is increasingly price sensitive and competitive? Well, that's the answer is ironically and probably interestingly sit underneath your own feet and right in front of you. And we're going to talk about that very specifically. So how do you get more orders from existing clients and new orders, uh, sorry, orders from new clients as well? So again, these are very challenging times. And, you know, believe me, in, in Scotland, where, where I operate, um, you know, COVID has definitely affected business here as well. We certainly are feeling it as a business. We certainly experience that. And uh, I'm sure you are too. And I, and I know it must be extremely, from the comments and the notes there we saw earlier, clearly people are frustrated. It's one of the most common things that people say. They were frustrated, a lot of anxiety, and a lot of concern about the unknown and the future and how it comes. And for certain personality types, that's a, a huge issue. Um, for other personality types, not so much. I would argue that it all comes down to probably one thing. And I know this is quite controversial, but it's people, it's your people. If you're a solopreneur, then it will come down to you. Um, however, if you have staff and other staff, then it's all about the people in it. It's about your people. It's also about the people that they interact with. So you can't really get away from that. And once you accept that reality, then you start to look at things and look at your people and yourself quite differently. And I think that's really the message I want to get across today is to when you leave this meeting today to look at yourself and your people with some fresh eyes. It's people, your people, that actually create great products, whether that's in creating them, inventing them or supporting them, whatever part you play in that overall process, the people are central to that. When it comes to service, excellent service can only be achieved through the actual people. What your customers experience, it's down to the people. So I suppose if it all boils down to this, my one message today would be that business, your business, my business, pretty much any business and your clients' businesses, they all they are all about people. And I think when you start to look at that, you maybe start to see things a little differently. And that's what I want you to look at. The, the other thing I would also add that of all the assets that you have got, all of them depreciate except one, and that is your people. Humans are the only asset that you have that you can actually increase their value, their contribution, and the difference that they make to your business. So if you look at this, it really is about matching. And you as a leader in your organization, is going to be faced with this scenario of making things fit better. And if you look at that, in every work environment, and you've got more than one work environment going on, and unless you're a solopreneur, but even then you probably have different environments going on. But, but within your organization, every individual has an environment. And some personality types will thrive in any given environment, and others will absolutely find that environment toxic and that is purely down to their personality and therefore your role in, as a leader if you like as a manager is to make sure that you're trying to manage that matching that compatibility between an individual and the situation that they find themselves in on a daily basis so if you want to build ongoing relationships with clients and make sure uh, you, the person that you appoint into those roles actually cares about them naturally. And I so said there are personality types who just naturally care and lose sleep about clients. It's just how they are wired. They care and they can't help but care. And therefore in those roles, that's the people you really want in that situation. You want people who will actually argue with you to help the client even if it costs you money. That's the kind of fanatical uh, 
uh, relationship building and client care that you probably want to engender in your organization. Mm -hmm.